Morning everyone, how cool. I've never been to this building yet. So this is really, really cool just to come here. Uh, and uh, like, it doesn't get like a much more li literal, almost cliche levels of literal for the metaphor of building the next economy within the ruins of the old one, do you? Like, it doesn't get better than that. Um, so this is really, really cool. Um, usually when I walk around a lot, when, I walk, when, I, when I'm talking, I tend to sort of accidentally walk around a lot and now I'm in the donut, so I feel really like I'll be committing some kind of moral faux pas if I step outside the donut. <laughs> like, um, it's good. Um, hopefully, um, Charlie and Joe and Magda have been uh, passing around some bits of paper. So in the absence of slides, so hopefully, yeah, get your hands on one. Um, they're just some, uh, it's just a little intro thing. We just, just this week, with, with help from the amazing Civic Square, Square crew, launched um, a new version of WikiHouse Skylark, but uh, called, or WikiHouse called Sk Skylark, and it's all there on the website, and you can go and check it out. Um, but it, it might help if you have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, it might help give you sort of a mental picture um, of what I'm talking about. But um, at the same time, I'm not going to, don't worry, I'm not going to use up your Sunday mornings to talk about the finer intricacies of building with plywood. Um, <laughs> it's, I, it's not that kind of day. Um, in, in the spirit of these kind of seven ways of thinking, I'm going to just, just try and talk a little bit about yeah, how we kind of take principles and apply them to kind of everyday, everyday practice. So, um, in these projects. So, there's this one idea that for me, which is, you know, kind of self-evident in, in, in uh, Kate and everyone's thinking, um, which is uh, about democracy, right, about the word democracy. And generally speaking, and, and I don't think this will be new now to any of you, Generally speaking, when we use the word democracy, if you ask most people what is democracy, they'll mean, oh, it's a vote, right? You get a vote every four years. And if we get a bit more nuance, we'll say, oh, it's things like uh, independent judiciary and stuff like that. But of course, when you go back to the original origins, the meaning of the word democracy from the Greek, of course, it means demos kratos, which just means people power, right? So um, the, the essential kind of simple idea that I keep coming back to time and again throughout my life um, is the idea that democracy is a diagram. Uh, 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 again, you can see these in these sorts of pictures here. The idea of, and that diagram can be applied to pretty much any system. It can be used to describe it simply, where is power in the system? Is it highly centralized or is it, or is it at the edge? And um, there, is no, there is no perfect right answer, by the way. This is not a sort of uh, kind of libertarian uh, sort of thesis or anything. Um, but generally speaking, of course, you know, the habit has been to be somewhat uh, prone towards is the 20th century era was being obsessed with over centralization and, and all the forms of uh, good, but also stupidness that came with it. And um, of course, what, what type of power that can apply to can be many types of power. So obviously there's the, the how distributed or centralized is political power. Political power is the one we think of you know, most, and therefore, and we think of politics with a big P, so we think of the politics that happens every four years. Actually, of course, things like the planning system are very everyday forms of politics, and, that, and, and uh, obviously that's, the, that's one I'm most interested in. Um, so, um, but equally you could talk about, there's, there's legal power, right, and, and generally speaking, uh, the courts in, in a kind of common law system and uh, uh, courts and the justice system have been have been a huge driving force for upholding the rights of the powerless uh, uh, on the outside of the fringes of society uh, and things like human rights but of course also they've been a force in upholding uh, the rights highly centralized forms of power obviously again to speak to my own sort of areas of, of, of interest um, property, right? So property and land ownership is this highly centralized borderline feudal uh, system and of course the, lo the legal system also is uh, necessarily has to, has to uphold that. Um, and then you say you can legal, you can then put that into um, things like uh, systems of ownership um, and, and that sort of blurs into economic power. So increasingly over the last decade, we've talked more and more about how centralized or distributed is economic power, um, uh, which is you, you can have almost any laws you like, but if actually if 
just a few people hold all the economic power, you don't have a very democratic society. Um, but it can also be applied in really, really literal, practical ways to industrial power, the power to make things or produce things, to produce goods or services, right? So we, we you know, in very obvious ways. So a literal diagram of this would be, what is a power station? Is a power station one massive building in the middle of a country with wires going out to all the houses with a producer-consumer relationship? Or is a power station thousand, millions, in fact, of rooftops and wind turbines all sharing electricity? So it's very, you know, there's a, you can see a really clear diagram there of, uh, of, of two diagrams, and uh, of, of two ways of doing something very, very tangible, like generating electricity. And there's loads of really interesting conversations um, around that, which I won't go into now, because also I don't know enough about them. Um, but, you know, about the conversations around efficiency versus effectiveness. Because, for example, having many, many solar panels and uh, energy storage units is not the most efficient kind of energy system, but it might be the most effective. So, um, yeah, so that's why I'm really interested in. Particularly, we uh, uh, and our team, we've been, in f and, and, and all the collaborators and contributors to the WikiHouse project, are specifically and practically obsessed with the question of who makes places and who makes houses. Because uh, it will come as zero news to any of you <laughs> that um, A, we have a housing crisis <laughs> uh, in terms of affordability, but also we have various other forms of housing and health crisis in terms of the quality of our homes, the quality of the community or, or the lack of community infrastructure in our neighborhoods and so forth, right? And a big part of that is actually not because we don't have the knowledge or the technology to build beautiful zero carbon homes and neighborhoods. We've known how to do it for a very, very long time. Right? The, you know, as William Gibson famously said, the future's already here, it's just not very well distributed. So we've known how to do it, but there's a problem of, of incentives going on. And this is one of the problems often, is that when you centralize systems, the people at the center of those systems, they're perfectly decent people, but they have different incentives than the people at the edge of those systems. So to give, a, again, very, very literal, practical example, I always say this, I'm like a broken record, but we all agree that we need to put more insulation in the walls of homes, right? I mean, hands up if you disagree with that. <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> we need more insulation. Um, it feels almost cruel to talk about well-insulated homes while we're standing here freezing, doesn't it? Um, the, uh, we all agree that we need to do that. Well, in a, in, a, in a direct sense, the only people with a direct incentive to put more insulation in the walls are the people who are going to be living there and paying the heating bills for the next 20 years. And yet that's the one group of people who are utterly disempowered in the production process of how we make our homes and neighborhoods over, over, you know, in, recent, in, in recent decades. Isn't that mental? Like it's really, really weird that we sustain, we've sustained that as normal, this, this massive dis misalignment. Now, the reasons for that are many, many complex, and we don't have time uh, to get into them here. But um, uh, as I saw Kate saying yesterday, we need to. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter if they're complex, they still won't go away. So and we're really obsessed with how we can redesign things like our land system and, and some of the speculative business models and, uh, and stuff that drive development. But one of the things we realized we could probably do is just kind of tip the playing field or level the playing field a little bit. So it, it, what's weird is that when you do find groups of communities and self-builders and, and uh, community developers and non-profit developers and local housing associations who do want to build fantastic, great zero carbon homes, you say, well, what's stopping you? They'll say, well, it's too difficult. And equally, when you go to, say, a local council and you say, well, why, aren't, why are you selling that bit of land to a developer? Why aren't you just licensing it directly to the community? They'll say, well, the community aren't able to develop because they're not professionals. Uh, they don't, it's too difficult for them. And we were like, aha, that's interesting, because too difficult is a problem that design can help with, right? Design's really good at convenience. So, um, uh, I, uh, for example, I had to take an Uber here this morning after the, the train line ground to a halt at Birmingham International. Um, Uber basically built this huge, huge business of basically making ta ordering a taxi a bit more convenient. Right? Like the, it's incredible, really, when you think about it. So, but the, the trick that design was doing was just making something a bit easier. So 
that's really uh, a, a, a kind of impetus. So, uh, behind WikiHouse. So I'll, I'll talk very briefly around WikiHouse, around three ideas, really, that where, how the WikiHouse project tries to be, uh, to take this idea of distributed by design. And it's only one part of, the, of this picture, but we enjoy it because it involves plywood um, and, you know, making things. Um, and just making wonderful houses and relationships. Um, so the first idea is the idea of industrial power in factories. So we're re it's really, really exciting that in recent decades, finally, we've started tra transforming the way we build housing to be more like the way we build everything else, i.e. in a factory. But usually when we've tried to do that, it's tended to be in this much more centralized sort of Fordist idea of what a factory looks like, which is a big facility that costs many, many millions of pounds. And there's quite a few of them popping up now uh, uh, in, in, you know, across the UK, and they're really impressive. They can produce houses really quickly, like the ones over there, right? They're really cool. Um, and the, you know, the really big ones can do like uh, two houses a day. But there are limitations to that. They're really, really good at big schemes with loads and loads of houses, with kind of one buyer. They, they're less effective on the, the small projects that are a bit on awkward sites and, and being done by many different people. If you're a small group, it's very hard to order from these factories, right? They also struggle with upturns and downturns, but that's another story. So we said, wouldn't it be interesting if instead of Putting, raising 50, 50, 70 million pounds worth of capital to build a factory, we could not build a factory. And instead, build a, uh, create a building system that's designed to be manufactured on CNC machines, which you can buy for, you know, sort of 25,000 pounds, sometimes even less, um, and set up in a garage, right? And so, wouldn't it be cool if we had a distributed network of micro factories that anybody could set one up and manufacture these sorts of blocks um, so, and, and, and sure, they might not be as efficient as the centralized factory, but this distributed network in a kind of Operation Dynamo-y, Dunkirk-y sort of way could have an amazing collective capacity. Um, so that's one of the ideas behind, behind WikiHouse is, yeah, this idea that there is not one big factory, there's this distributed network and anyone can set up a, a WikiHouse factory tomorrow uh, if you're bored. Uh, you know, you've got nothing else going on. Um, the second idea is, uh, in, is open source, right? Which is the idea of don't try and centrally own the intellectual property. Now, this always gets held up as A, wildly innovative, and B, altruistic. It is not that innovative. Um, no one owns the IP on the brick, and most buildings are made of brick, right? Because you don't need to own the, the, the recipe in order to sell cakes. Uh, I think in lockdown, Mr. Kipling actually gave away his, his recipes, and I think he's fine now. Like, <laughs> he's, uh, where, if he exists, he lives in a mansion. I don't think there is. Any. Um, <laughs> uh, presumably, he lives with Aunt Bessie and other <laughs> fictional. Anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, the, so so it, it's, it's, it's really not that radical. Uh, in fact, um, there's a great Stuart Lee uh, uh, talk online on YouTube about jokes in which he doesn't quite say this, but effectively says that up until the 1970s, the idea that you could own a joke would have been considered laughable. And of course, all that changed, right? And it's a bit the same with, with, with building recipes. Like, you know, the idea is, oh, I, I own the staircase. I own the IP on the staircase. You have to pay me a royalty every time you put a stair into a house. It's a ridiculous idea. So um, it, it's A, not that radical. It's also not altruistic. Um, because the point is by saying, look, this common, this, this, these common recipes, by putting them out there for everybody, you're not just giving them away, you're also recruiting everybody to, as your R&D team. Right? So suddenly you have R&D team of thousands of people testing the minutiae. And we, we launched Skylark this week, and literally within hours, we had people tweeting us saying, oh, you've missed a bit on this block here. And we're like, cool, fixed. Right? Um, so um, the idea, we don't, you don't always need to own the IP. We can just say, actually, this knowledge is common knowledge. It, it belongs in a common pool. We don't need to compete over that. Because frankly, there have been so many great ideas, great solutions that have, haven't been used because they're sort of bandwidth locked behind you know, oh, this is mine, 
right? And if you ever want to uh, 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 kind of look this up, there's a fascinating story of something called Gopher, which is someone who tried to make a proprietary version of the World Wide Web. So it was like the World Wide Web, and instead of making it free and open source like Tim Berners-Lee did, um, they tried to say, oh, we're going to extract royalties off this. And that went well. Um, <laughs> So, um, yeah, no, that, 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 that's, that's the other side of it. And, but the third side is much more boring and much more practical, but actually is, I love it, which is the idea of just making stuff easier, making it simpler to do, right? So one of the principles that goes into um, WikiHouse, this is an old version of the WikiHouse friend, they're usually much bigger. Um, this one might, what's that, what's that film where it's going to need to be at least eight times taller, eight, eight times bigger? What is it with Ben Stiller? Zoolander. That, is, that house reminds me of that. Um, we've got this sort of mini house, but the whole idea of it is to make, there's this lovely concept called poker yoke, for example. So, um, which means mistake proofing. So if you've ever used a plug socket, which I imagine you have, um, you're familiar with this concept, which is you can't put the plug in the wrong way around. It won't let you. And actually British plugs are really brilliant, clever piece of safety proof design. Um, so the idea that you can inscribe thousands of hours worth of knowledge and experience into a file and then just share it and, and the whole thing just make it easier to slot together. And one of the, 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 the driving reasons why we just, um, say just, we've been working on it for like a year and a half or two years, but we've been working on the thing that we just released was because we realized that WikiHouse Ren, the old version, it was, an, it was a kind of nice idea, but in practice it wasn't that easy. It wasn't that easy to get the files. So we're constantly looking to say, how can we lower the threshold of knowledge so you don't need to be an expert to understand how that bit works? Or actually, if you do need an expert to sign off that piece of paper, we make it as easy as possible for you to find that expert and for that expert to understand it and charge you the lowest possible amount of money. So by lowering the thresholds for participation, that I would actually say, if I had to pick one of the three strategies, it's less kind of noble maybe, but um, it, it's probably the most effective, which is just make stuff easier. And, and there's, a, you know, there's a really basic idea. This is kind of written on my eyeballs, that great Buckminster Fuller quote about if you want to change something, don't just fight against the existing reality, build a new version that makes the old one obsolete. And of course, that hopefully is a big part of what's going on here. Um, and it's, it's really that, right, which is we've got to make an, an, a new version that outperforms the old, the old thing. So rather than sitting there going, oh, isn't it really annoying that people don't build zero carbon homes? Let's use our ingenuities to come up with our, ingenuities isn't even a word, is it? Our collective ingenuity um, to come up with a solution where we try and make it simpler than the old option. Right? And that's ba it's a basic kind of mission. If, like, if we can make building zero carbon homes that are well insulated, full of daylight and really lovely, easier and even cheaper than building crappy dark ones that with you know, 30 to 50 tons of embodied carbon in them, then we'll win the future. Uh, and that's it. With that, I will actually shut up. Thank you so much for listening.